With great board games comes great replayability. Welcome to another Marvel United Deep Dive, everybody, here on Digital Charcuterie. My name is Andrew Fantasia. Thanks so much for tuning in. As usual, click bells and like things and put your thumbs in certain positions to let the world know you enjoy stuff. Welcome to another of our Deep Dives where we are going to be talking about all of the expansions from Marvel United, the board game, uh, that I own at least. There's only two I'm missing, so you're getting pretty much most of them. Uh, and we are going to do a deep dive into each one and talk about exactly what you can find inside, exactly what you won't find inside, and whether or not the price of the box is worth it for you in particular. Because maybe you are somebody who really, really likes Psylocke, but you're not the biggest fan of Loki. You want to know which boxes are going to be best for you? That's what we're here for. As always, you can also help a brother out if you are a fantasy fan. You can go to Amazon and check out my fantasy novel series, We Were Wizards, which are, for now, only available there. This is the first book in the series, and the second one is also available right now on Amazon. They come in three different formats, hardcover, ebook, and paperback. I will put a link in the description below where you can get your hands on some We Were Wizards goodness. If you have a fantasy fan in your life or you are one yourself, do yourself a favor, do me a favor, do the characters in these books a favor because I am putting them through hell and they could use it. Check out We Were Wizards, available now. All right, I hope you all stocked up on web fluid because we are about to go to the table and enter the Spider-Verse. I know it sounds scary and it kind of is. All right, Spider-Verse, Spider-Verse. When it comes to expansions, you could do worse. This is Marvel United Enter the Spider-Verse. And right off the bat, I think I have to say, in terms of the Season 1 boxes, it might be my favorite artwork. Like, that's beautiful. Every one of these images just complements each other color-wise and, and pose-wise. Like, man, I love that. Let's flip the box over and take a quick peek back there. And once again, we have a Kickstarter exclusive character in this box, and that is this handsome gent, Spider-Ham. I have to be careful, I always incorrectly call him Spider-Pig. That is a Simpsons character, that is a totally different situation. If I call him Spider-Pig in this video, I apologize. But Spider-Ham was Kickstarter only, so if you pick up this box at retail, chances are you will not get Spider-Ham. But that doesn't mean you got scammed or you got a bad box that's just how it is the retail versions don't usually include him let's open it up Ooh, and what kind of value can be found within welcome to the spider verse little did we know uh when this came out wait did did the miles morales movie already come out maybe it did I think it did. I think that came out in 20... Yeah, that came out in 2018. What am I talking about? By this time, we had already seen the movie. I just Don't, don't listen to me. I don't know what I'm talking about. All right, let's read this. The Big Apple sleeps, unprepared for the days of insanity to come, as the Green Goblin plots to sow chaos in the streets across the five boroughs. His is a growing terror, bringing panic to the people and rendering ordinary law enforcement helpless while his henchmen kidnap, extort, and pillage their way across the city. Meanwhile... The Goblin himself gathers the resources to perfect his secret formula and enhance his powers to unimaginable heights. Yeah, that's why he's so hard to beat. But all is not lost. The Spider-Verse has been thrown wide open as Spider-Man, Ghost Spider, Miles Morales, and Spider-Ham combine forces across the dimensions to face the Green Terror head-on. Only their daring and skill can stand between the Goblin and total control of New York. They'll have to guard their secret identities with care as intrepid reporters take to the streets in droves to report on their heroics during the massive crime wave. It's a tight web to walk with the fate of the city on the line. But if anyone's up to the task, it's the amazing spider heroes. I mean, that's true. If anybody's going to beat the Green Goblin, it's going to be these people. And he's got years of experience doing it, and now he's got friends. So, Goblin's going down. All right, here is what is happening inside the box. Uh, you have your special setup uh, telling you about how Green Goblin requires special setup, and then your secret identity challenge, which we will go over later. But here's a look at everything you'll get inside, and here is an even better look at everything you'll get inside. Let's remove the plastic sheath. I don't know what the real term for that is, but plastic sheath makes it sound cool and important. Here are our six Spider-Verse locations. 
they were really nice and generous with the locations in season one. Uh, I guess to make up for the fact that a lot of the expansions didn't have a lot of minis. The Daily Bugle, our first one. And if we zoom right in on the bugle, we can see J. Jonah Jameson is yelling, Parker! All the way down there. Um, that's just so cool. And it looks like it might be snowing, or is that just sort of flecks of dust on the, the building there? I think it's snowing. Yeah, it's a nice wintry day in New York. Okay, Midtown High School. Very nice. Queens, that's where Peter lives. Osborne Laboratories. Osborne is not a nice man. The Brooklyn Bridge. I was there in real life. It's a beautiful bridge. Very, very old and spooky. Makes you feel like you're in Gotham City. Oscorp Tower. And that's it. All right. There's your six locations. And here is your villain dashboard for the one and only villain in the box, Green Goblin. A very uh, detailed dashboard, especially compared to the Killmonger and the Loki dashboards. Those were a little simpler. Green Goblin ain't simple. There's nothing simple about him. Beautiful picture of Green Goblin. And Green Goblin uh, has a special setup. One of the villains in season one with a special setup. One of the few villains in season one with a special setup, I think. And he is infamous for being one of, if not the most difficult villains in all of Marvel United. So if you're the kind of player who's looking for a challenge, like I want to be challenged, I think this is the box for you for no other reason than this guy right here. I have faced him, I think, four times now, at most, maybe three. I've still never beaten him. He's one of the few villains that has just stumped me every time, because uh, he, he does a lot of stuff with picking up hostages which is very Gwen Stacy of him. He's going to be doing a lot of damage to you and putting threats down, but he also has master plan cards where he takes more of his goblin serum and that increases the strength of his damage. So he starts off dealing only one damage to each hero in his location, but once he starts taking that serum, he can do as much as three damage to each hero in his location, which is insanity. And he's always putting all the threats down. And when all the locations have a threat card, the heroes lose. So it's, you you really are pushed to your limit when you fight Mr. Gobbo. All right, so here are our cards within. Oh, there's a little bit of a mess here. I'll clean that up later. But let's start on the left here with Spider-Man and Spider-Ham. Very similar color schemes on the cards, so we got to be careful. There is Spider-Ham, not Spider-Pig, because Spider-Pig lives in Springfield, not New York. Uh, but he was a lot of fun in the movie, so I get why they wanted to put him in here. And he's perfect for a Kickstarter exclusive character because he's the kind of character, and I don't mean this as any offense to him, but let's be real. He's the kind of character who, if you didn't get the box that has him, if you missed out on him, it's not the biggest loss in the world. I'm sorry, Spider-Ham, but it really is. It's not the biggest loss. Unlike the next box we'll cover, which is Guardians of the Galaxy, the character they left out of that is a huge, huge omission. Uh, and if you missed out on that character, you feel it. But here, if you miss out on Spider-Ham, you're, you're fine. And there's the Spider-Man cards. God, that looks cool. Um, growing up, this is, I am not alone in this, but growing up in the 90s, he was my favorite superhero. That cartoon just was my obsession as a little boy. And uh, my best friend was the same way. He and I adore Spider-Man, and it's just the fact that uh, we have this great game with him in it really gets us both excited. And uh, the first time I got this game and he came over, he was like, please, please let me try Spider-Man, and he was just in awe of all the cards. So, yeah, they, they did a wonderful job with that. Spider-Man is very heavy on tokens. He gives out a lot of tokens. He's a great hero. All right. And as you can see, there's a lot of stuff going on in there. We'll talk about that later. And here we have our other two friends, Miles Morales and Ghost Spider. I still have to get used to Ghost Spider as her name. I always tend to call her Spider Gwen, but apparently Ghost Spider is what she's actually called in the comics. Wonderful color scheme on those cards. She's great. I Whoever paints their minis, Ghost Spider has that little, let's see, is it easier to see here? Yeah, it's much easier to see here. She's got that web pattern on the inside of her hood. Whoever paints their minis, uh, I don't know if you did that pattern, but... If you did, ooh, 
Bless you, my friend. That is, that It sounds like a pain and a half. And there's Miles. Miles is so cool. Yeah, wonderful artwork on Miles. And I think that the way they differentiated Miles and Peter is subtle, but so well done. You know, it would be really easy for them to just look like the exact same figure, just with a palette swap. But very subtly, the artists made sure Miles was a little bit shorter and a little bit skinnier, scrawnier, because he's younger, he's a teenager. And his eyes are just a little bit wider, because he's got that wide-eyed kid innocence to him. And they nailed it. You, If this was a black and white image, I could look at that and still know, oh, that's Miles, because of the body language and just the way he's drawn. Well, well done. All right, put that aside for now. And then we'll take a look at the green, I almost said Green Lantern, the Green Goblin deck. Did I call him Green Lantern in this video already? I probably did. We've got Green Lantern on the mind today. There is Electro, who is one of his henchmen, um, which is strange. Green Goblin is never one that we would uh, think of as having henchmen, but they gave him henchmen in this game. They gave him the lizard as a henchman, which was a big tease for us fans because this was our only look at United style lizard. And then two seasons later, we finally got him as a character and Craven as well. I, I doubt Craven would ever work for the Goblin in real life, but I'm sure it happened. You know, there's a zillion comics. I am, I will never doubt any judgment call that Simon made. Uh, and there's Green Goblin's master plan deck. Right there, he's got his formula that he's going to keep chugging to make himself more powerful. All right, and that's all in terms of cards. And then our miniatures. Let's start, I guess my least favorite miniature is probably Miles. And it's only because it's just sort of him sitting there, right? It's not, nothing too crazy or exciting. It's a cool figure. It's just him sitting, uh, but he looks perfectly miles. Something about the size of the head and the size of the eyes, they're just a little bit bigger than Peter's, just like a, a smidge. In fact, if we take Peter out and compare and contrast, you see what I mean? There's a little bit more of just that he looks like an innocent boy when you look at that face, and Peter looks like a bit more of a seasoned adult. They, they found a way to pull that off. But yeah, there is Mr. Miles Morales. Very, very cool. All right, next figure. Um, actually, you know what? My next favorite figure is Ghost Spider. In fact, that hood looks great. Her pose is good. She's mid-swing. Nothing too extraordinary about it, but they really captured just, again, the, the feel that this is a young kid do that. Yeah, that's better. This is a young kid, um, but still more seasoned and uh, a bit more confident in being a spider person than Miles. As it was in the movie, I think, because in the movie she was a spider person longer than Miles was. And next we have, uh, actually, next we have Green Goblin as my next favorite figure. Very, very detailed uh, he's standing on that glider, hunched over. He just looks so menacing. Uh, <laughs> you can almost hear Willem Dafoe's voice when you look at that face, right? Don't tell Harry. Yeah. And he's got his little pumpkin bomb. Uh, very nice figure. Uh, this was a an action figure that I always wanted as a kid, was him and Hobgoblin from the cartoons, because the gliders and everything, it just looked really neat. Uh, but this is the next best thing, man. Good stuff. Next is Spider-Ham, who is my next favorite figure. Uh, they really, again, they nailed the toony aspect of him. The, his little snout really just makes a difference, just the way they, they molded it. And then to top it all off, he's standing on this girder. So it's actually a really, uh, really cool heroic pose. One day I'll get better at showing these off to the camera. I promise. But yeah, there's Spider-Ham. I almost said Spider-Pig again. And then finally, my favorite figure in the box. I don't think it comes as a surprise to anybody. Brick Wall Man. Uh, there he is, the spider. Actually, if I turn it slowly, it kind of looks like you're rounding a corner. 
He's got a great pipe coming out of this brick wall too, alongside it. Uh, I think a lot of people were unhappy with this mini. They didn't like the idea that Spider-Man was kind of stuck on a wall. I think it's really hard to do Spider-Man justice in miniature form. You could have ended up with something like the Miles figure, which is fine, but it's not as dynamic as this. I think this really is the best possible Spider-Man figure you could get for this game. And like his spider logo is embossed too, like it's sticking out. They, they did a level of detail here that is very impressive. Him hanging on to that like a toddler clinging to the side of a pool, right? We all did that in pools and he's ready to swing off. That's just, I think that's excellent. That is an excellent way to portray the Peter Parker Spider-Man. All right. Now we've got these little doohickeys here, right? What is this? What are you looking at? What you are looking at, my friends, is the Secret Identity Challenge. All right, so the Secret Entity Challenge comes with these little cell phone camera things here and uh, these press passes here. So the way this challenge works, when you are setting up the game, you place a journalist token, which is one of these. You place one of these on each location adjacent to the hero starting location and then another one on the villain's starting location. So a simpler way of saying that is you put three of these around the board. So half of the locations will have one. So to kind of do a really rough demonstration, let's say Oscorp has one, Brooklyn Bridge does not have one. Now, when any hero is in a spot with a journalist, that hero can perform any actions as normal, but if they do any action other than a move, the journalist sees it and snaps a photo of it and they get what's called an exposure token which is this, right? Because the journalist saw them doing something incredible and heroic, so they snapped a photo. You can only get a maximum of one of these per turn. During your turn, you can use a heroic action to move a journalist token to any adjacent spot. So if there's a lot of trouble brewing here and you can't do anything about it because there's a journalist around, you can spend that heroic action to get rid of the journalist token. Uh, you don't even need to be in the same spot as the journalist token to do that. But it says here, keep in mind, moving a journalist token from your own location will also get you an exposure token. So you really got to be careful. As soon as any hero has three exposure tokens, that means their secret identity has become public, which is horrible. And that has two effects on the hero. They immediately take one damage. And then on their next turn, they have to play their hero card face down. And once their secret identity is exposed, they no longer gain exposure tokens. And this is almost tied with Black Panther for my favorite challenge. It's very, very close. The Black Panther one is excellent. I think this one is still excellent. I just like the other one a little bit better. But how perfectly thematic is that? How perfectly thematic to Spider-Man in particular, who's all about, I can't let people know who I am. I can't let my secret identity get out unless there's, you know, a civil war going on or something. Uh, the idea of those exposure tokens getting in your way, it really adds an extra layer of challenge to the game that is very, very difficult. Uh, it really bumps up the difficulty, more so than the Black Panther one. I think that's why I like this one just a tad less, because the Black Panther one is a new layer of coolness without being invasive, whereas this can get invasive, especially if you're dealing with Green Goblin. It's like, oh, I have enough on my plate without these journalists. So if you enjoy a good challenge, and like, a, I mean, a really good challenge, this is definitely the box for you. Because not only do you get pretty much the hardest villain in Marvel United, but you get a super difficult challenge to boot. And that is everything that comes in this box. Now you know what time it is. It's time to pack everything back up, and I will be adding all the things that do not come with the box, because that's how I store all my stuff. And once again, a friendly reminder that this guy was Kickstarter exclusive. All right, so first I'll be adding my equipment cards, which is just a bunch of web shooters for the four main spider people. And those are going to go in here because once again, there was a spot for them. And then I'm gonna add Spider-Man 2099, the white suit version, and Cyborg Spider-Man from season three. And those are just gonna go right there. And voila, I have a full well. And look at these wells. There's still so much room in them. 
That's why I also keep Spider Woman and Venom in here, too, because why not? There is the room, so I'm going to take advantage of it. There we go. They go there. Oh, sometimes it's very difficult to keep these flat, but we do the best we can. And since Venom's hero deck is in here, it only makes sense to put his villain deck in here, too. And there was room for one more, so Venom and Carnage go hand in hand. I just put their decks in here as well. And there's the Secret Identity Challenge card, which does come in the box. So those go there underneath Mr. Green Goblin. And man, Simon, if you're watching this, I am very grateful that these wells were so deep that even after sleeving, I had so much room to work with. So if you could do that for the DC Superheroes United games and any future Marvel seasons, that would be awesome because that really came in handy. And here are the dashboards for those two extra villains that are just going to slip underneath here. Like so. So you've just seen everything the Enter the Spider-Verse box has to offer. Is it going to be worth the bang for your buck? Let's do the math and find out. Okay, that'll do it. And now it's time to look at exactly how many points of worthiness we can assign this delightful box of spider goodies. Are you ready? The box comes with five minis. So off the top, that's a nice crisp five points right there. Four of those minis are heroes. So that's another four points. Keeping in mind that one of those heroes is Kickstarter exclusive, but it is what it is. Then you've got your villain, Green Goblin, who is worth two points for a grand total so far of 11. Six locations come in the box. That equals out to three points. Then you've got your secret identity challenge, which gives you an extra one point. And that all totals out to 15 points of delicious webby worthiness. So that'll do it for today's Marvel United deep dive. Next week, we're putting our space helmets on and blasting off into the cosmos to guard some galaxies. I can't promise there will be groovy 70s tunes, but I would like to. Anyway, that'll do it today for this Marvel United deep dive here on Digital Charcuterie. I've been Andrew Fantasia. You've been incredible. Thank you so much for watching as we continue to make the wait for DC Superheroes United a little bit shorter and a whole lot sweeter. See you next time.